The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 2292, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily. It's special because this is where I answer your questions. On the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you like an audiobook. And with that, let's keep this intro nice and short so we can hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Today's question came via email, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, but Kara writes, Hi, Dr. Neil. How accurate are fitness trackers when it comes to calories burned? Can I trust my fitness tracker when it says I have 250 extra calories burned during exercise? Or should I take potential error into account when calculating the difference between calories in and calories out for the day? Thanks. Thank you for taking the time to send in your question. Now, a while back, one of my friends who happens to be really into fitness came up to me. Well, more like ran up to me because she was so excited to show me her new smartwatch fitness tracker. She was showing me how it tracks nearly every movement from walking to jogging to bicycling, even swimming. With just a couple of rotations of the watch face dial, she could go into waterproof mode and the watch would begin tracking her swimming strokes. Technology has been progressing so quickly, it's hard for me to keep up with all of these newfangled doohickeys. So I thought to myself, how accurate, really, are these things at tracking all of these movements? Plus, do they help keep us motivated and exercising more consistently? So maybe there's an added advantage, even if they're not the most accurate. So let's find out. When it comes to their accuracy, as you can imagine, it varies by brand, and the type of exercise being performed. I realized that some of these devices even track your sleep, which totally blows my mind. I did find a meta-analysis that looked at this very idea of fitness tracker accuracy. Without getting too scientific, conducting a meta-analysis is a highly respected form of research. This is because it involves collecting a bunch of studies on the same topic, like in this case, the accuracy of fitness trackers, combines them, and performs one large analysis on all of these findings. I always complain that we can't base conclusions on the results of just one study. We always need to look at other published findings as well, and a meta-analysis does just that. In general, it seems as though most of these fitness trackers are fairly accurate at estimating the number of steps you walk or run each day. But beyond that, like with calories, the reliability begins to vary quite a bit. So when it comes to estimating the number of calories burned, they tend to underestimate. This was actually surprising to me since most trackers on fitness equipment at the gym, like treadmills and ellipticals, tend to overestimate calories burned. But in the case of fitness trackers, they tend to underestimate. Now, as far as tracking sleep, since I was talking about that, most trackers overestimated the time spent actually asleep. Now, fitness trackers will calculate distances traveled. And it gets a little sketchy here. Distance often was overestimated when moving at slower speeds and underestimated when moving at higher speeds. They also track heart rate. And most have been good estimators of heart rate. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any data on their accuracy for estimating swimming distances, though. I imagine those studies are being performed as we speak. But here's another important question then. If their accuracy isn't perfect, why should we use them? Well, a more appropriate question might be, who really cares about accuracy so long as it keeps us moving? It turns out that fitness trackers do help keep folks motivated in the short term. Having a new gadget or new fangled doohickey, as I referred to it, can be a good motivator soon after you purchase it, just like my friend that came running up to me showing me all of her tracker's features. But that newness does tend to wear off over time, just like when we were kids. You finally get that brand new toy and swear you'll play with it forever only to find it in the garage collecting dust a month later. 
To keep that sense of novelty alive, we need to find ways to keep it interesting. For example, we could think of the tracker as a game and try and beat our previous scores. Once we get tired of that, we could join a group and track our progress together or create a friendly competition. The other issue is that these trackers don't provide user direction for improvement. Let's say you hit a plateau and don't know how to proceed. The trackers won't tell you how to get through that plateau. Or say you want bigger shoulders like I have been told I need to get. These trackers won't help show you how to go about this. Now, how long does motivation actually last? Based on the data I've seen, only about four weeks. So here's the bottom line. If purchasing a fitness tracker helps someone go from exercising sporadically to becoming more committed and consistent, even in the short term, then by all means, it's worth it. When we look at the accuracy of calories burned, it may underestimate calories burned. And the added advantages are that using a fitness tracker can help us become more aware of other health habits like sleep. And it can help with those small wins. And small wins over time can transform lives. And if over time you find the novelty of the fitness tracker waning over time, you can keep it more interesting by creating some friendly competition or getting your friends to join you on your fitness path. Wait, are you gaming on a Chromebook? Yep, it's got a high-res 120 hertz display, plus this killer RGB keyboard, and I can access thousands of games anytime, anywhere. Stop playing. What? Get out of here. Huh? Yeah, I want you to stop playing and get out of here so I can game on that Chromebook. Got it. Go ahead, break it down. Discover the ultimate cloud gaming machine, a new kind of Chromebook. The Whole Foodie Festival is on at Whole Foods Market through October 3rd. Save on hundreds of culinary favorites like delectable cheeses, crackers, charcuterie, olives, and chocolates for that perfectly elevated snack board. Class up the party even more with short ribs, caviar, and produce on sale. And save on a huge selection of wine, including those made with organically grown grapes, starting at $6.99. Check out the Whole Foodie Festival today. Terms apply. Must be 21+. plus. Please drink responsibly. Thank you again so much for taking the time to send in your question. Now, if you want to submit a question and have it answered right here on the show, you can email a question to health at oldpodcast.com. You can also call in your question. The number is 161-I-LOVE-OHD. That's 1-614-568-3643. Or go to our website and you can submit your audio question there. Just go to oldpodcast.com slash ask. All right, that's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through. And I'll see you back here over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.